So Godot version 4.4 beta just released, and this is one of the most feature-packed builds that we've seen in a really long time. So it just came out today, and I wanted to make a really quick video kind of going over everything you need to know. So getting right into it, the thing you're probably looking at is this window I have right here, which is actually my game running. And I have all of these options on a toolbar utilizing this new game tab at the top but essentially we're able to now run our game in sort of a debug mode in a separate window so to do that we just go up to the game tab and then we have these three little dots and you're able to embed the game on next play and also turn it into its own floating window so i'm going to disable floating window and then when we run it it's going to basically embed itself into the editor which is also super handy because you don't need like a double monitor setup or to keep switching between windows or whatever but some of the key features are we have our camera button directly inside of here so we can move our camera around and then it will just be directly uh, reflected inside of this game tab and then if i switch over to the 2d mode right here we're able to now select anything that's in the currently running game which is insane like i can just select this node and then it's going to show all of its properties in the inspector which is crazy like usually you would have to go to the remote tab and like filter through everything and find the node you're looking for but we can now just select things as we see them and look at the properties, which is something that's gonna be super helpful for debugging. Now, obviously this also works in 3D if you switch to the 3D mode, but I don't have a 3D scene set up here. Another really small thing you're gonna notice is that the editor just feels more responsive. So hovering over nodes is now gonna highlight them and the same goes for like tabs and stuff. So it definitely does feel a lot more polished and like a modern editor, which is really nice. Another really helpful feature is that you can now select any node and inside of its properties, you can right click to favorite a property. So if I just click on favorite, it's going to put it at the top of my inspector. And then we have another option to pin values, which basically makes it saved even if the value is equal to the default. Another super helpful feature for all the 3D people out there, when you are positioning a camera, you can now see the camera's view in the inspector. So instead of having to switch back and forth between like previewing the camera and then going back to you know, set it up, it's just going to always display the camera's perspective inside of this property, which is super helpful. Now, a little bit of a more niche one, you can now define the minimum and maximum value of a curve resource. So before we were limited to zero and one on the domain, but now we can obviously change the range of a curve, which is pretty helpful for different scenarios. Another small addition is that we can now add markers to animations. So you can see I have an animation player here and if i just right click on the timeline i can insert a marker and we can give it a name and also a color so if i want to make this like red or something i guess that's pink but uh, yeah we'll just do that and now it will pop up right here and reading up on exactly how this feature was implemented it looks like we can also set animations to loop when they reach specific markers so really similar to other animation programs and it's really cool to see just how much the animation player has improved over like the past year or two. Now, another feature that is actually one of my favorites and is really a cool direction to go with the whole loading resources is that the quick load menu has actually been implemented all across the board. So typically when you load in a resource, you have an option to either load it directly, which you have to end up looking up the file, or you can use the quick load menu, but right now it's just 100% quick load. And it's actually a lot more streamlined than it used to be. So opening, like if I wanted to load a script here, it's going to basically pop up a window. And I now have icons for all of my compatible files. And you'll notice that with quick load, it's only going to allow me to select and search for files of the proper type. And then I also have these neat little icons for all of my files now. So for images and stuff and custom classes, it's going to be really cool to see the different icons and then it also supports fuzzy search now which is something that I really got irritated with with the previous quick load is you had to type everything perfectly now it's going to be a lot less like strict with how you search for all of your resources so you can kind of just type the gist of it and load things in a lot quicker we also have one of the most requested features for exported variables so you can now statically type exported dictionaries which is super helpful like if you've tried to export a dictionary in the past you have to manually set the keys and the values and like insert it every single time and it gets really time consuming but by statically typing it it's now going to default to that format that you want so even if i clear all of my values here 
the dictionary is still going to stay the correct format. So I have my integer key and my string value. And this just makes it a lot more user-friendly because this has been a huge problem for me. And I know a lot of other people have complained about this. So really awesome to see that as a feature. We can also now export tool buttons. So if you've been using the old like Boolean setter method on a tool script to execute your code in the inspector, you don't need to do that anymore because we now have the export tool button annotation. And that's basically gonna do what it sounds like. We have a button in the inspector. And if we click it, it's going to execute whatever function we attached to it. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to set this up. These are just some really simple examples, but I do have a video that covers all the export methods in Godot. And there should be a timestamp if you want to learn exactly how you can use this export tool button. So check out the card for that. And then lastly, I wanted to mention the Jolt physics engine. So if you don't know, Jolt is a open source physics engine that was created for and used in Horizon Forbidden West. And it's something that has kind of been loosely integratable, if that's a word, with Godot as a plugin. But with 4.4, it's now going to be kind of like a built-in thing with Godot. Now, one quick thing to note, it is only in 3D at the moment. So if you have a two-dimensional game, you can't use Jolt yet, but Godot is definitely going in that direction. So I definitely see that being a thing in the future. But basically Jolt is gonna be a game changer because it drastically increases your physics performance. And you can check out the simulation that was run by Games From Scratch as he did a video on it, which I'll just link in the description. But the performance increase is massive and it's super easy to switch to Jolt if you just go to project settings, scroll down to physics. And if you go to the 3D tab, you just swap out the default for the Jolt physics. And that's gonna restart your editor and apply that. But if you are using 3D, I would definitely recommend looking into that. Now, the last thing I wanna mention before we just kind of skim over the blog post is that if you hover over any function names or properties in your script view, they're now going to pop up a little description, which is something that we've had in VS Code for a while. So all the VS Code users out there this doesn't really matter, but if you do prefer the Godot script editor, which I do not, you can just hover over like this input function and it's gonna pop up this window where you can kind of read about it and just give you some internal documentation without having to like control click onto it. So that's really helpful, especially for new users to just really quickly see what's going on. But the last thing I wanna do is just skim over the blog post for those of you who didn't read it. Um, so we have, the 4.4, just the information, um, some of the highlights, we covered the window embedding, which is probably my favorite feature. And that's gonna be a huge game changer for like all debugging purposes. We have some other minor things here, um, particle emission, visualization, some 3D rendering stuff and performance changes. And then we have this breaking changes section. So this has been something that's really controversial lately. And I'm not gonna cover it too much in depth here, but I will make another video on this probably next week. So stay tuned for that. But essentially what's gonna happen is you will have a UID file for, uh, it looks like all or most of your files in your project. And this is gonna allow you to reference files by their UID instead of looking up their paths, which I feel like this is a good thing. I just find it a kind of weird way of doing it. Now, obviously I don't have a better way of doing it, but I feel like it might be a bit messy. And that's kind of the thing that people are complaining about is when we have this with version control, it might mess up a lot of things, especially with multiple people. But honestly, I don't see this being a huge problem because we've had import files for like forever. And I've never run into an issue in like five, six years of using Godot. So I don't see UID files being that big of a deal but it will be interesting to see um, how those are being used because lately I've been creating a constant singleton and basically just setting all of the paths to like most of my resources in like a constant or something inside of that singleton, which allows me to only change the path in one place if it breaks. But I guess this might be more efficient, uh, we'll see. So yeah, I'll mess around with that and I'll have a video for you guys um, going more in depth. And then we have some small things like if you print a float, it's now gonna print with the decimal. And that's something that I honestly didn't even know was a thing, but apparently you used to print like 1.0 and it would just print as one. So this is just gonna be helpful for 
catching errors and stuff with that. But apart from that, nothing too like game breaking. We do have some cool stuff with the uh, navigation server. So that's getting some more love recently, which is really cool to see because that's one of the areas that I feel like is still a bit messy in Godot. And they mentioned that on this post that a lot of the navigation stuff is older code. So it's cool to see that that's getting improvements. We also have some additions to the 3D animation side of things. So obviously the animation markers like I showed you guys. And then we have a new look at modifier 3D, which is gonna help with procedural animation and stuff like that. So if you are into that kind of 3D animation side of things, this is gonna be really helpful for you. And then we also have the Springbone simulator, which if I remember correctly, Jiggle and Springbones have been like kind of working in 3D, but I know that their two dimensional counterparts are a lot more efficient. So it's cool to see that this is getting fleshed out and we're getting additions in that area. And then aside from that, we just have a lot of improvements. There's some huge optimizations to the scene tree and also the initial load times for a project. So especially if you're on like a lower end computer, kind of like me, I don't have the greatest PC, but whatever. You're going to experience a lot less lag when just doing general tasks. We also have the game tab, which is something I mentioned. And then kind of a cool feature when you're placing a 3D object, you can have it basically raycast to the ground so that it can snap to other objects, which is just gonna really help for any sort of three-dimensional map editing. We have some smaller things like dragging and dropping across different windows, which is kind of neat. And then once again, navigation stuff, which I briefly mentioned earlier. And then on the physics side of things, apart from the whole jolt aspect, which is super exciting, we have a new physics interpolation, which basically allows you to have a lower physics tick rate and still have that really smooth look and feel. So here the side by side, we have physics interpolation, which smooths out the in-between frames. And then without physics interpolation, it's a lot more jittery. So again, it's really cool to see Godot getting all these physics improvements. And I'm hoping we keep going in this direction because this is, this is really good. And then apart from that, there's a ton of more like really small kind of exciting features, but nothing worth uh, wasting your guys' time on in this video as this was kind of meant to be shorter. But if you do want to read up, I'll leave the link to this blog post in the description, and then also a link to all the official Godot blog posts leading up to this build. So do keep in mind, we're probably gonna get like two or three more versions before this becomes stable, but you can always stay tuned for that and I will be giving you guys updates because this is one of those builds that I'm like super excited about. I haven't been this excited for a Godot version since probably 4.0. But anyways, just thought I'd share some of the key features and things I'm looking forward to. Now, obviously, if there's something I missed, be sure to drop it in the comments. But other than that, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for the upcoming video, which I'll be making on UID files and kind of all you need to know about that. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one and I hope you have a great week.